Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Battle for a Healthy Voice. I'm David Moyer, your vocal coach. I've been doing this over 50 years, and I'm jumping into something I love to do. I love music theory. I majored in that, as well as performance and education in college. I love to teach tone syllables, how to pronounce words so that you can understand every single sound of every single syllable of every single word. I call it projectional pronunciation. I learned it under Fred Waring and his Pennsylvanians, looked that up and listened to the number one choir in recorded history of which I was a part of, okay? And that's how I learned it. And we used to spend about 10 and a half hours a day doing it. Right now, one of my students and fellow podcast people podcast host and producer is sunny galt she's with me in this and we're doing this together hi yeah. sunny hi david welcome to the battle for the healthy voice guys we really appreciate you being here hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and we have a series called how to sing we've released a video called how to enunciate while singing and after doing that video david really wanted to break down this information even more there's kind of a lot to learn and so we're releasing a few videos about you know how to do this projectional pronunciation. David likes to call it pro-pro. <laughs> We're going to start a whole wave of stuff. <laughs> I think it's great. We'll start a new thing. Pro-pro. Yes. Projectional pronunciation, which by the way, very few people know about it except my students. And that's because I developed it from Mr. Waring's tone syllables. Yeah. And one of the things I did develop that you reminded me of just a little bit ago, when I said when we were in that big theater uh, the uh, Kingdom, I think it was called. No, oh. Superdome. Super Kingdom, I think, is in Seattle. Anyway, the one that got destroyed during um, uh, Hurricane Katrina. Uh, we were doing a show for about 65,000 people, and I had developed what I called delayed speaking with projectional pronunciation because the echo was so heavy off the wall because it's not designed for singing or speaking. It's designed for football games and lots of cheering and screaming. Um I learned to actually delay. I'd go, hi, everyone. Welcome to the new Christy Minstrels show. <laughs> and then it would, I'd beat the sound of the deflection. Well, in the last video, we talked about sustained pitch consonants. And now we're going to talk about what's called subvocal consonants. They are a pitched consonant that is sub, if you will, in terms of pitch. Why is that? Because they don't sustain they pitch off the band until the time at which the cavity in the mouth that is using, being used to form them is filled, and then they have to be pronounced. I'll give you an example. B. B. Mm -hmm. You have to give the pitch to the B, and, you, and in projection pronunciation... We always do that anyway when we speak if we're doing it right. But you'll hear people all the time go, believe me, believe me, believe me, I'm telling the truth. I know we are crate. We are really crate. They're like, where's the P? Yeah, and where's the G? <laughs> yeah. We are really crate. Oh, yeah. Well, or the C, the C, yeah, where's the C? The G, in it? and now it's a C. What the yeah, heck? Yeah. Do you spell great? Yeah. C-R-E. So anyway, there's three subvocals very common in the English language. You'll find them in lots of other languages too. But we're concentrating on English today. So first one is B. Okay. Then it's D, D, and then it's G. Not the soft G, G, which is a sustained pitch consonant, but the hard G. The, to God be the glory to God. And the people that don't do that, what you'll hear when they're performing in a size, as long as the room is maybe about holding 200 people or more, you'll hear this. To God be the glory to God be the glory. <laughs> what are you saying? What are the words to that song? Yeah. Well, I can't understand them because you have to pitch the sound, which we're taught that anyway in school, but in projection of pronunciation, in pro-pro, you have to use a push to the subvocal. I believe, I believe for every drop, drop, which most people do, I believe for every drop of rain that falls. <laughs> False. Why do we change it? It doesn't even make sense. Well, like, they don't understand it. And they don't but think they they're know doing the it words. wrong. But they don't think they're doing it wrong. They don't think about it. Who's taught them? 
Have, has a coach ever taught them, besides singing the phrase of the song, the sentence, have they ever taught them to say, you know, within that sentence are 135 different sounds to make those words. For no. example, just for example, you're working right now on a song that you're going to possibly release in iTunes called Mary Did You Know. Right. Let's take that apart just for a moment. It's got one sub-vocal in it in the first phrase. But let's pronounce all those sounds. By the way, they got construction going outside. Oh, it's we driving never, me nuts. We never, never have that happen. Yeah. But Sonny's a professional <laughs> podcaster, and it's driving her nuts. So yeah. If you, if you see the veins yeah. in my face popping out, it's because there's a noise that I'm going, ah, oh, there's no way I'm going to be able to remove that noise. And this is our studio time, so we got to do it. Yeah. So just tune that out, just like I used to tune my nine brothers tune and sisters out. Tune it out. Get it. It's, it's, a, it's a singing tune joke. Tune <laughs> it out. Very good. And by the way, that's tune. That's a sustained pitch consonant. So let's just take Mary Did You Know. I hope you're listening because I'm being serious about this. I may sound goofy, but that's because I am. Anyway, Mary Did You Know. M, E, uh, R, E, D, E. And you have to move to the D. So it goes D, E, E. It sounds like you're e, having a stroke, David, uh, right now. Mm, uh, oh, ooh. So there's only 15 sounds okay. to Mary Did You Know. When I was with Fred Waring, you know what we would do? We would actually have them written on a piece of paper, and it had different symbols that told you what to give more time to, and it even had pronunciation like M, mm, Mary. You know what that was? That was U H M. M, mm, Mary. Mary, mm. you're like, but not a um, Mary. It was like, mm, hear the um in it. Mary, Mary, did you know? Now, in today's world, we don't sing, did you know? We don't do that. So you got to contemporize it. You go, Mary, did you know? We sing, did you? Did you? We do. And if you sing, did you, they go, most people would go, what you talk about, Willard? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Mary, did you know that your baby, you're the sub-vocal, baby boy. Now remember, don't let your lips, like we're taught, when you want to pronounce something more, you go, oh, pronounce it better. So you go, B -b -b no, don't suck them in. They have to stay like this. And you go, Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? You have to do the duck. Do the yeah, duck. You use the duck. And you use the push. Mm. And again, the push, as I said in the other video, and I hope you're watching all of them and listening seriously, the push, percentage-wise, is determined by the size of the room. No matter what, if you're on a mic in a tiny little room with 10 people, you hardly need to do that at all. Mm -hmm. You can just keep the duck, the duck shape. It's a trumpet shape, actually. Yeah. It came from, you know, oh, but you asked me to demonstrate some things. Okay, if I do it with a big mouth, like most people sing today, here's projectional pronunciation. I'm trying to do it with this kind of approach. Mary, did you know? That your baby boy would one day walk on water. Now, I'm making a little fun of it, but the truth is, if you watch people sing, they do that all the time. I mean, that's a dominant sound of today. Here's another one. I call it the Jerry Lewis. Forgive me, Jerry, and any of his followers. Okay, but it's true. You did that, and it's not the most healthy or correct way to sing. Is he still alive? Ready? Are you I don't know. Not, I don't, he, I don't really think he, think he passed away right last year, didn't he? Well, anyway, here we go. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Okay, yeah. so what would you prefer? Mary, did you know? Or Mary, did you know? Or Mary, did you know? Yeah. I think you know the answer. Yeah. Okay, so that's what's called a subvocal. And I have a phrase that God gave me that works perfectly for this. I said, what am I going to do to get the B, the D, and the G in one phrase? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, Dave, I believe. It's just like he spoke to me, because mm -hmm. he does. He does to you, too. <laughs> Be still and know that I am God. Anyway, here it is. I believe 
Okay? I believe for everyone. I, I messed it. I messed it up. I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. Hear it? Hear the guh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, my voice is broken, and it rattles a lot. But for someone who sings correctly, like little Sylvia, and please watch Sylvia Ruff sing. That's the best example I have to offer. And Sunny's right behind her. Don't worry. <laughs> She's coming along. Um, the, I have to offer of correct singing in terms of pure bel canto and projectional pronunciation, which Sylvia does. She, she adopted it. But again, or I should say, remember, it, there's a lot to singing well. Mm -hmm. As my teacher used to say, and I'll leave you with this thought. Again, make sure you visit AmericanMusicAcademy.com. Listen to my wife and I sing Sweet Little Jesus Boy. You'll hear the pure bel canto in that genre. Then also visit purebellcanto.com. Mm -hmm. You want to take a free voice lesson? Give us comments. Yeah. Please comment, and I will respond to you. I'm trying to comment to everybody, and hit that subscribe button, and tell everybody else to do it, because you, together, us, all together, we can help give people healthy longevity to their voices. Sure. We'll give them extended pitch range and extended expression or increased expression, however you want to say that. So do that. And just remember, when this is called pro-pro, it's just a fun name I use, it's projectional pronunciation. It comes from Fred Waring's tone syllables. And when you can understand someone and they're on a mic mm -hmm. in a large venue, know this, they probably studied yeah. tone syllables. The ones you can't understand, and they're doing that huge mouth, there's a much better way to sing. So hit the subscribe button. Together, we can help people have healthier voices. I'm saying it again, so you make sure you hear it. Extended pitch range and increased expression. And thanks. Thanks for visiting Battle for a Healthy Voice. We're serious about this. Yeah, absolutely. We are. Yeah, absolutely. we're very passionate about it. Yep. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.